Hey everybody, CW here, Card Wolf, because I am always on the hunt for great cards. Today is Friday, and you know what that means. It's time for Dorking with Dice. We do it here every Friday on the channel. The way it works is I've got this big pink D20, and we roll it and hopefully keep it on the table, and it corresponds to the 20 vintage packs right here in the Magic Box. And uh, they are a mix of hockey and football this week which is because hockey and football are being played. And uh, it's it's good mix of packs. I gotta tell you, I added a lot of packs to the box that I think we either have not opened on the channel, we haven't opened them in a while. And of course, in the number one, 10 and 20 spots, we have packs that are a little better than the other ones. They're all good packs, but they are especially good in those key spots. And I'll preview those for you right now, as I pick the uh, D20 up off the ground here, number one spot, we've got a cool pack from 96, 97, Gaudi, Fleer Gaudi. They had the license for Gaudi at that point, and they did football cards. A very unusual pack, one you don't see very often and kind of tough to find. Hope we get into that. I really like really like these cards. They, they definitely have that feel of old Gaudi baseball cards, and so it's kind of neat to get into those packs. In the number 10 spot, we've got Dunruss Priority Hockey. This is from, uh, well, I opened this, opened one of these on the channel, I guess it was, I don't know, it was last year, it was a while ago, but anyway, you guys really liked it, and so I thought, let's put another one of those in there. These are from uh, 97, 98, really pretty cards, very nice set of hockey. We've got another hockey pack in the number 20 spot, and it is a good one. It is OPG 1983 hockey and these they never did uh tops cards they didn't do u.s cards for hockey back then so you only had the opg ones and i really like this set this is a i don't know there's something about this set i i've always really enjoyed and uh hope we get into it today lots of hall of famers in here many different wayne gretzky cards that you can get out of this pack so uh, hopefully we'll roll that today lots of other good packs in here as well let's see what our first pack is going to be on today's episode of Dorking with Dice. Thanks for joining me, and we will open pack 16 to start things off. Pack 16, we'll count backwards from 20. There's 19, 18, 17, as you can see, is a juicy rack pack. I don't throw those in here often, but there's one in there this week. Number 16 is hockey. It is Upper Deck Collector's Choice Hockey, in fact. Very nice cards from 1996. 10 cards in the pack and we're looking for hockey stickums inserts and every pack contains two upper deck mvp hockey cards we'll get those out of there a ton of inserts in here as well there's a list back here of other inserts you can get so very nice pack again this is a uh, upper deck collector's choice hockey from 1996 plenty of hall of famers in this pack as well and we start off with our mvp card right on the top there, I believe there, if I'm remembering, there are two of them in here. And uh, we start off with, who is this? This is Cam Neely. Really good player back in the day. Get that in focus for you. Nice Cam Neely card. I'll show you the back of this too, so you can see what these look like. There you go. Different photo on the back than on the front. You guys know I always appreciate that a great deal. So a pretty cool card there. And Paul Coffey is their second MVP card. Very nice to see that Hall of Famer there. That is pretty awesome. I'm going to Wolf Lair that one. It's a good card. We had Kevin Stevens starting off our base cards out of this 96 pack of Collector's Choice. John Van Beesbrook, very good goalie there with the Panthers. We got Van Beesbrook being with uh, New York, but there he is with the Panthers. Long time Rangers goalie. And uh, Victor Kozlov looking pumped. What is Victor Kozlov so excited about? He's playing for San Jose in 1996. I don't know. Didn't have a lot to be pumped about there. Here's another former Oiler and Hall of Famer playing for a different team. It's Yari Curry. Pretty cool to see that. I almost kind of forget that he ever was with the Rangers. That's kind of neat. We got Coffee and Curry there. And here's our uh, Stickums card. It does not have a player on it. It just has the hockey goal on there and the collector's choice logo in case you wanted to stick that onto something so kind of neat i don't know maybe my son will be interested in that we got left winger gino Ojik, and we finish off this pack with uh, kirk muller good left winger there he is with the maple leaves looks like he's about to get tripped there if you look at that if my son were 
here today on the channel, you would tell us that is illegal and that is a, something that they should call a penalty on, and maybe they did, who knows. Put the hockey cards over there today and roll our second pack, see how we do. That was pack 60, and our second pack is going to be pack 20. All right! How about that? That is fantastic. Man, I cannot believe we had pack 20. That is the pack I guess I was most excited about, so that's pretty sweet. 1983 OPG Hockey here on the channel today. Big pack! For us to go through. As I said, there's a lot of Wayne Gretzky cards in here. There's his base card, there's the team card, there's record breaker cards, there's uh, an inaction card, there's all kinds of Gretzkys in here. I think there's like seven different Wayne Gretzkys you can get out of here, so our chances are pretty good. Man, I haven't opened one of these in a long time. It's pretty exciting. The gum is going to be, I'm sure, quite disgusting, but uh, let's see how we do there. Open this carefully. We get an in-action card right off the top. It's Bernie Federko. Actually, the gum looks surprisingly pink and robust. You see, uh, yeah, I don't see any evidence of like mold or mildew. Actually, smells pretty good too. I'm not going to eat this, obviously, but uh, that's that's pretty impressive. The pack is in uh, good shape as well. I'm going to put that over there. Bernie Federko, our first card out of here. Hold that up. There we are. And the in-action cards, you know, there's a base card of this player too, but the in-action cards were meant to sort of highlight some of the bigger stars in the game at that point. And you can see the languages on the back. You got English on top and French below because these were imprimé au Canada. That's right. Me pulling out the French for you. You got Paul Gardner here during his time with the Penguins. Good player for them. Here he is on the Power Play Goal Leader card. Pretty cool to see that. Blake Wesley from the Whalers. Rocky Saginook looking dazed. <laughs> and, uh, sort of out of sorts there. Reed Larson, another in-action card. I always liked Reed Larson. He was a good player. Good defensive man playing there with the Red Wings. Reed Larson was in the HL for a while. I always really liked him. I thought he was a good player. Mario Tremblay, for the Canadiens, played in the NHL for a very long time. Mario Tremblay, very good player. Ken Houston with an amazing mustache there. Ken Houston, not related to Sam Houston, totally different. Brian Sutter, nice card of that player. Captain, as you can see, of St. Louis at that point. Bobby Smith, there we go. Very good North Stars player. He's probably one of their greatest players in history for the North Stars. That's pretty neat. Nice Bobby Smith card. And Chris... Katsopoulos for the Whalers. Another Hartford player in here. We got two Whalers out of there. So nice pack. Some nice names in there. No Gretzky cards, but uh, still some pretty good names in there. I think I could be wrong, but I think Bobby Smith's a Hall of Famer. I don't know if Reed Larson is, but maybe he should be. Bernie Federko. I don't know about him either. So uh, I guess some minor stars in here. Quite a few. I'm going to put Reed Larson on top. Always, always liked him for some reason. Put that over there. So that was... That was a huge pack for us to hit. That's pretty awesome. Let's see if we can hit one of the other big packs in here. We got one and ten still left. And, of course, that sweet rack pack in the number 17 spot. What could that be? Let's see what we have here. We got 20 again. Clearly, we were destined to hit 20 today. No question about that. And there's pack two is what we're going to open next. Pack two is this blue pack. And it is more hockey. Is it going to be a sweep for hockey today? It could be. 92-93... Score Hockey, and as you can see on the pack, it was exclusive for Canada. That's just how things kind of were for certain releases back then. They would only do them in Canada, but uh, nonetheless, these are bilingual cards. 16 of them and plenty of inserts in this uh, score pack <clears throat> from 92-93. See if we pull something big out of here. I'm not sure I've ever... This is one of those packs I put in there that I don't think I've ever opened on the channel before. I could be wrong, but I think that this is a new one for the channel. So if uh, you've seen me open this before, let me know in the comments. I don't remember ever opening one of these on the channel. Brian Benning, defensive man for Philadelphia, starts off there. I'll show you the backs of these. Again, different picture on the front than on the back, which I always approve of very much. So, and you can see these are indeed bilingual. English atop, French below, just like... The 83 pack that we just opened. So Jason Moore skating for the Sharks. Matt Sundin, nice card there of that Quebec player. Randy Carlisle playing without the helmet because he could do that if he wanted to. The helmet rule went into effect 
I think Randy Carlyle had been in the league like a year or so before the helmet rule went into the effect. Uh, you know, everybody had to wear helmets except players who had been in the league prior to the helmet rule. They could still be foolish and not wear helmets. And Randy Carlyle was one of those guys. Really good defensive men, though. Played for a long time for the Penguins. And there he is with the Jets. Doug Wilson, another longtime NHLer who didn't need to wear a helmet. He was in the NHL I think several years before the helmet rule went into effect. Another good defensive man. He played for the Blackhawks for many years. Really good player for them. So he was a captain for the Sharks. I think this may be his last year card, actually. Doug Wilson was a really good veteran presence for the Sharks at that point, but I don't think he lasted in the league much longer than that. John McLean from the Devils. Nice to see that player. Really good player for them. And we got Ken Baumgartner, was in the league for a long time. There he is with the Leafs. Rob Brindamore, another good player there, doing the splits out on the ice. Bob Kudleski, who I do not remember. And Kerry, Cuff Kerry Huffman, another good defensive player. Rob Ramage was also in the league for a very long time. I remember he came up, I believe Rob Ramage came up with the, uh, I think he came up with the Rockies, the Colorado hockey team. When they first came on, I think Rob Ramage was with them, and here he is all the way into the mid-90s there with the Stars. I believe that was after they moved to Dallas. Joe Sorella and Lucien de Blois, the Frenchman from Winnipeg. That was my German accent doing the Frenchman from Winnipeg, so just in case anybody was confused there, I don't know why you would be. I'm so good. I'm such a master of accents. We've got a nameless Rangers player here on their team card. Who is it? It is Brian Leach, and it is not a team card. It is the Dream Team subset. Brian Leach, the Wales Conference defenseman. Brian Leach looks I don't know, it looks like an Olin Mills portrait there. He looks kind of like he's staring off into the uh, distance there. Mark Habsheed from Calgary, and we finish off with Guy Ibert, the uh, goalie for St. Louis there. That is a prospect card of Guy. So that's a nice rookie card of that player. Looks like he's doing sort of a high kick to get that puck to get out of there. It doesn't want that in there. So uh, a lot of cards in that pack. I haven't opened one of those for a very long time. A lot of cards in that pack. Again, some pretty good names. A couple of these guys I feel like might be in the Hall of Fame, but I'm not sure if they are. Randy Carlisle played forever, and so did Doug Wilson. So they could be. Matt Sundin was certainly a good player as well. I'm going to put helmetless Doug Wilson on the top of that pack. We'll roll one more here and see if we can get a football pack this week on Dorking with Dice. So far, we have not hit one. What is going to be our fourth and final pack? It is 17. How about that? We get into that rack pack, man. Let's say Banner Day on Dorking with Dice at number 20 and number 17. We get into a rack pack, and that is going to more than satisfy our football cravings because it is a 1993 Topps football rack pack with 45 cards in there, including three Topps gold cards. And looking for Topps black gold in here as well. You can see these are... No way you can see what is in these. A lot of rack packs back in the day, people would be able to see with the top card and the bottom card. And, you know, it would give you a lot of insight as to what you were going to get in those packs. But when Topps did 1993 cards, they did away with that and they made sure you couldn't see what was in the packs. All right, so let's say we open this up all the way down the middle. That's how these usually go for me. There's the first cell of this, and there's the second one, and that allows us to get into the third one. All right, let's pull these out and put them in one big stack. That's pretty awesome. We only hit one football pack, but it is a rack pack, so we get as many cards as we would get if we hit three football packs. So that is pretty sweet, in my opinion. I like how that worked out. Hopefully we hit a black gold card in here, and we should get three gold cards regardless. We start off with a sideways card of Hall of Famer Warren Moon, the only player in the U.S. Football Hall of Fame in Canton, and the Canadian Football Hall of Fame as well. Warren Moon has that distinction. Todd Light, good player for the Rams back in the day. Todd Light, Quinn Early, about to receive there for New Orleans. We've got a franchise player card of the Hall of Famer Reggie White. It's a pretty sweet card there. I should have shown you the backs of these. I always forget to do that. There's the back of that one. And here's Joe Montana. That is awesome. Nice Hall of Fame hit there. Reggie White and Joe Montana back to back. Not so bad. There's the back of the card. And you can see Joe Montana looking suave as always. Put that in the wolf layer for sure. We got Demetrius Dubois, 1993 draft pick card. So signified by the football down there. 
Gary Anderson from The Bucks, and Bill Fralick, who looks absolutely confused and maybe isn't aware that he is on a football field. I don't know. It looks like he just got his his hair blow dried or something. I don't know what's going on with Bill Fralick there. Team leader of Vaughn Johnson, good player for the Saints back in the day. Coleman Rudolph with his hand on his hip. That's right, Coleman. You're sassy. We know it. Sideways card of Marvin Washington for the Jets. Andre Collins there. And Bubba McDowell. Another team leader card of Barry Foster. Really good running back for the uh, Steelers back in the day. Barry Foster, good player for them. Drew Bledsoe. Nice draft pick rookie card of Drew Bledsoe. That's a nice card. I'm not a big Bledsoe fan, but that's a pretty good one. Nice to pull that. And here is a league leaders card of Audre McMillan and Henry Jones. I'm going to guess that is a league leaders card for maybe kickoff returns or something. Oh, with interception leaders. All right, yeah, that makes more sense. Audrey McMillan and Henry Jones, interception leaders for the AFC. Flip this over for another franchise player. It's Paul Gruber from the Bucks. There's our first gold card also from the Bucks. It's Keith McCants, who's uh, holding out his arms like, hey, did you see that? Look what I did. Number 52 here. Here's our second gold card. It's Doug Reisenberg from the New York football team Giants. And our third gold card is Dan Salamua from the Chiefs, who was a good player, I remember him. Good player. Flip this back over so it's right side up. We got Troy Vincent from Miami, good player for them. And Anthony Pleasant adjusting his pads. Jerome Henderson and Chris Spielman, very good player for the Lions. Pete Stoyanovich, he, uh, pretty good. He played for the, I feel like Pete Stoyanovich played for the Dolphins for like 17 years or something. Russell Maryland, who uh, I think. I could be wrong about this, but I think Russell Maryland actually went to Maryland for uh, playing his college days. Dwayne Harper and Reggie Roby, good player for the Dolphins. Donald Evans lining up for Pittsburgh there, and Bernie Kosar. Second time we've gotten a Bernie Kosar. I think two. I think that's two dorking with dice episodes in a row that we've gotten Bernie Kosar. I don't know what's up with that. Something weird going on there. There's another Hall of Fame quarterback for us. It's Dan Marino, looking like he's barking orders and trying to tell people where to run their routes to. We get another double. Man, this seems to happen every time we do Dorking with Dice as well. We get duplicates in the pack. It's a little more forgivable in a rack pack because there are so many cards, and they're, you know, they're sorted across different sort of cells within the pack. But uh, see if we get any more dupes here. Dwight Stone, good player for the Steelers. Daryl Green, really good player for the Redskins. Good safety for them, as I recall. Was he a safety or a wide receiver? He was a cornerback, so I was wrong on all counts. But nonetheless, very good player for them. He might be a Hall of Famer, actually. He was very good. Seth Joyner. Chris Gardaki, as you can see, a punter for the Bears. And Dion, nice. Dion Sanders card there. That's pretty sweet. Show you that one. Put that in the Wolf Lair. Why not? Ernest Biner, good runner for the Redskins and other teams. Tracy Simeon and Michael Haynes. Mike Haynes. Wow, Mike Haynes. I didn't realize he was still in the league in 93. Is that the same Mike Haynes? No, no. It's got to be a different Michael Haynes. It's got to be a different Michael Haynes. In any event, Eric Howard there and Stan Brock for the Saints. Mike Pritchard and Alvin Harper getting tackled by a nameless Bronco. Barry Sanders. Man, this thing is full of Hall of Famers. This was a good rack pack. Nice Barry Sanders card there. One of the greatest running backs in NFL history. Very cool to grab one of those. And he's wearing the headset back on the uh, reverse of the card. It's, uh, you don't see many players wearing headsets. I don't know. That's kind of an unusual image for me. Ken Norton finishes things off there. Good player for the Cowboys. So uh, we got, I think if we put these stacks up next to one another, if we put all the hockey cards in a stack and, of course, all the football cards, I think we opened pretty much, actually we opened a little more football than we did hockey, it turns out. So... Well, there you go. I didn't really see that coming, but it worked out with that very nice rack pack, which was chock full of Hall of Famers. We got Barry Sanders, Dion Sanders, Dan Marino, Joe Montana. We also had Warren Moon, and uh, I think Reggie White was in there as well. Yari Curry and Mark Messi, or Paul Coffey, rather, both former Oilers with other teams there. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I certainly did. Always do enjoy opening the vintage packs. Hope you have a great weekend plan, whatever you've got going on. I hope it works out for you. we got some snow coming up in the schedule for us over the next 24 hours, but uh, I don't think that's going to amount to much. See how it goes, though. I'll see you back here on Monday. 
enjoy your weekend. Thanks so much for coming out to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button for me. It helps the channel a lot. And as always, happy collecting.